Hey guys, it's Anusha Sayed here. Thank you so much for the positive response in part one of my series on how to start your freelance illustration career. I hope it was helpful for some of you guys, but let's get on to part two. So today we're basically gonna go talk about how to submit to art directors rather than just like a company. <laughs> In a company, an art director is going to be the person who's generally in charge of the design team and like the whole art department, I guess. Um, and they are usually the ones who are going to be hiring freelance illustrators as well. I generally, when I'm working on a project, you know, usually in publishing or whatever, I am working directly with an art director. And then they're the ones who give me the design brief and guide me through the whole process. Of course, I don't always work with an art director, depending on the size of the company or um, who just who's on the team. I might be working with an editor or a designer. Um, but for now, just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use the catch-all phrase of art director, also abbreviated to AD. So the benefit to contacting art directors directly rather than just the company is that you basically have a more direct conversation and communication um, because like you know you're getting your artwork to the eyes that you want it to be seen by and you bypass places that don't have a submission page on their website like we talked about in part one. Contacting art directors is going to be more tricky and more time consuming than just contacting the company um, because it's going to take a bit more work to find them and contact them. There are several different ways to find and contact an art director. Number one, meeting them in person. You can meet an art director in person and get a business card from them with all their contact information. This is easier said than done, obviously, but it is the most effective way since it is literally the most personal and direct form of communication. Um, I would usually find an art director at an event like comic conventions, uh, industry events, literary conferences. The event entirely depends on what kind of work you're looking to do. Since I work mainly in publishing and children's illustration and animation and stuff like that, I know that there are certain events that are better suited for me and cater to my style of work. I'm sure that there are other events that are better suited for people who are in editorial, scientific illustration, textiles, whatever. I attend quite a few conventions and so through trial and error I've kind of figured out which ones are best suited for me. Personally, I know New York Comic Con, TCAF, Lightbox Expo, and uh, CTN are, I have the best luck with those. But there are other shows out there as well, things like Icon, Spectrum, Bologna Children's Book Fair, LCAF, and then those last two are actually international as well, Italy and London, I think. So there are actually quite a few conventions outside of North America as well, which is pretty great. But besides meeting art directors, in general, I love attending conventions and conferences. It's just a really great way to connect with other creatives, learn about the industry because they usually have some kind of workshop or, you know, some kind of learning event going on. Um, and it's a good way to share your work. But I'll talk more about convention another day because that is, that's quite a topic. <laughs> You'll usually find an art director at their relevant booth at the convention, you know, at their publishing booth or their graphic design booth or whatever, the, wherever they work. And you'll be able to exchange cards at that booth. Or if they're presenting at like a talk or a lecture or a workshop, after they finish presenting, you might be able to talk to them directly there. If you do go to a booth, if you're lucky, they might be holding portfolio reviews. And that's, I mean, that's the number one ideal because you are making sure that they are literally looking at your work. Um, and then you'll also get some constructive criticism out of it. But unfortunately, they don't always do portfolio reviews and often they are gonna have huge lineups. And you know, I when I go to conventions, I'm tabling, so I, I, I can't get away from my table that long. So they don't, it's not usually worth it for me. Um, in any case, if they're not offering reviews, that's not the end of the world because either the art director will be, you know, just at the booth and you can talk to them there and exchange cards or at the very least, the publisher or company, whatever, they're going to have business cards lying around, you know, pick up a card, you'll have the contact information there and you can send them an email later. It's contacting through email. So in part one of the series, I covered submitting to companies in researching them online. 
Uh, we can do the same thing with art directors, but it's going to take a bit more work to find their information. While a lot of art directors will have their email address on their website just out in the open, more likely than not it's going to be hidden and you're going to have to dig a little bit to find it. And I don't blame them because if you know you had your email address out in the public like that, they'd they probably get like thousands of emails every day and probably a lot of spam as well. So how exactly do you find that email address? Well, first things first, you want to find out what their name is. If there's a company you want to work with that's on your client database already, you can start by going to the company's website and find the page for a contact or about, some kind of page which has like a list of their employees and you know, staff written on it. If you're lucky, they have the art director's email and name right on there. You can just send them a quick email, but it's usually not that easy. It's fine if you don't find the art director's email. We're just looking for any person's email because what we're trying to do is figure out how they format their emails. So for example, you find out that there's a finance guy at the company and his name is um, john.do at coolmagazine.com. So, you know what their email format is and you want to find out what the art director's full name is so you can basically, you know, input the name and there you have it. Uh, to find out an art director's name, you can usually just Google company name art director and it'll show you. Or you can go onto the company's LinkedIn and then see who works for their team. Uh, once you have their name, you can easily email that person, you know, using that finances guy's uh, email address as a template. So let's say if the art director's name is Kelly Kapoor, uh, that becomes kelly.kapoor at coolmagazine.com. Of course, the email format can vary from company to company. So they might format it as uh, kkapoor at coolmagazine.com or Kapoor Kelly at coolmagazine.com or, you know, there are just like a hundred of hundred different ways you can format it. So you basically, you want to make sure you have the correct email format before you start doing this. Uh, this usually works, but sometimes it doesn't, and you'll know if it doesn't work if you send an email with that email address and then it immediately responds back saying, this email doesn't exist. For editorial illustration, what I like to do is go to a bookstore and then check out their big old magazine section, and I'll, you know, s spend quite a while just like combing through every single magazine which I'm kind of interested in, and then pick out the ones that have illustrations in them, especially ones which have a style you know, similar to my own. And then I will go on to their staff page. You know, that's a list of everyone who's worked on the magazine and contributed to it. It's usually gonna be found um, before or after the table of contents. And you might find a submissions link over there. And if not, you'll at least know who the art director of the published of the magazine is. If there's an art director you already have in mind and you want to find out their email address, another thing that I've done in the past is, you know, Google their name and see if they've done any interviews in the past or any podcasts. Sometimes if you're lucky, they will mention what their email address is. And you also end up having like a kind of connection, I guess. Like when you're emailing them later, you can mention like, oh, hey, I listened to you on so-and-so, I read about you here, um, which is a good opener for an email, which I'll talk about in a second. And lastly, you can just ask your friends for e art director email addresses. I always tell people that other artists are not their competition and instead of rivalry, you should focus on making friends and lifting each other up, you know? So if you do have peers in the same industry and they probably will have their own artist client database, then, you know, you can ask them what emails that they already have and you can trade up with them. Number three or two and a half is writing an email. So I went over in part one how to submit to companies and we the way that we submit to art directors is usually the same, but there are a couple of differences to note. Um, since you're talking to an actual person instead of the company um, and this art director is gonna get like hundreds of emails a week, I try to make it as personal as possible because I want to stand out. If I've met this person before, for example, at a convention, I'll mention that I met them at this convention, you know, bring up any talking points that we had. If I was referred to them by someone, I'll mention that connection as well, just so that we have that connection, you know, to me and that like there's like some kind of reference point. Um, I might include a mention of a project that I really like that they've done in the past or, 
you know, if I heard them in a podcast or interview, you want to make it seem that it's personal and you're not just sending out a mass email. Like I mentioned in part one, I do have some sort of a template copy paste email that I use, but I do try to change it up as much as I can so it doesn't look like a copy paste. After all of those opening points, I'll eventually say that I'd love to work with them sometime and I'll direct them to my portfolio, you know, portfolio link and everything. And that's pretty much it. Don't make it too long. Uh, don't suck up. Be professional, correct grammar, spelling, whatever. Um, basically all the things that I talked about in part one, but most of all, you wanna be confident. So what, by that, I mean that you shouldn't start off your email with something like, hi, I'm an amateur artist, or, you know, sorry to bother you, or I don't have a lot of experience, but please consider looking at my work. I don't know if you want. <laughs> this is just a good rule of thumb to follow in general, you know, online and offline is that, you need to be confident in your own abilities as an artist because if you don't have faith in yourself, why would the client, right? You're not an amateur illustrator, you're not an aspiring illustrator, you are an illustrator. You can also include a note at the end, you know, proposing that you'd be available for a call and that you're available on these days along with your Skype username or your phone number. This relieves some of the pressure for the art director on how to further the conversation and move on to next steps. Though I would leave this note for art directors that I've actually had a conversation with in the past, like I've met them in person, or I already know that there's some interest already, like I they've retweeted or liked my work on social media and we've had like some kind of conversation going on. Uh, I wouldn't do this for cold emailing. It might come across as a little bit cocky. Anyway, I'm gonna share an email. This is a real email that I've written to an art director in the past um, with the names change, of course. This email is for a very specific situation that I've had, so it's not the best template for you guys to follow, but I hope you'll note what I've done here and apply it to your own emails. So, dear Tom Nook, I hope you're doing well and managed to get some rest after New York Comic Con. Thanks again for dropping by my table. It was lovely meeting you and the rest of the Nookling Press team. I want to send over my portfolio and let you know that I'm currently available for freelance illustration work and I hope you might keep me in mind for any possible design work that I might be a fit for. You can find my portfolio here. Uh, I hope we can work together in the future. If you're available to talk further, please feel free to contact me on my cell. I'm free for the rest of the week and I'm happy to work with your schedule. Thanks and have a great day, Anusha say it. I'll admit that this email is pretty wordy. Uh, you do want to generally keep it short and sweet, but like I said, this is a specific email for a specific situation following up on a conversation I would have had with them in person. If you're looking for a more basic email template to follow for like a first time person that you're submitting to, uh, I would suggest looking at my email sample in part one. Social media, this is Part three or four, I'm not sure anymore. Uh, social media. You can also get in touch with art directors via social media, uh, mainly on Twitter and LinkedIn. So covering social media is definitely a whole other topic. Like I've got a lot to say on that. Uh, but for now, I do want to stress that as a freelance illustrator, it is absolutely vital that you need to have an online social media presence. You know, you want to be, it's not enough that you have like an online portfolio, you need to be sharing your work out there. I have gotten like 90% of my work because of social media and posting on Instagram and Twitter, Tumblr and all of that. It's how I share my work with a larger audience, you know, get involved with the art community and connect with potential clients. Like I've made so many friends on social media. Like it's, it's been such a game changer for me. You should definitely have an Instagram, but personally Twitter has been the big thing for me and surprisingly um, LinkedIn as well. Uh, Instagram is like a mini portfolio and art directors will definitely be looking at those and keeping you in check with that. But Twitter is how you make connections and have conversations. Same with LinkedIn though to a lesser degree. Uh, LinkedIn is very surprising. Like I always knocked on, knocked off on, I don't know what the word is. I always dissed LinkedIn. You know, my dad would be like, oh, you should join LinkedIn. And I'm like, oh, dad, like it's for business people and finance guys. But there are quite a few um, art directors and recruiters and whatnot on LinkedIn and it's a good way to connect with them. But basically, you want to post your artwork on Twitter regularly. 
um, have your social, you have your portfolio links, email address, and connect with people on Twitter. I mainly use Twitter and LinkedIn for connecting with art directors and recruiters. If you know an art director's name, you can just easily search it up on those websites and follow them there. Um, if you don't know the an art director's name, you can at least search company name, um, art director on those accounts, and you can find relative accounts that way. Uh, if you, what I like about Twitter and LinkedIn as well is that like if you find one account of like an art director, it'll also show you similar accounts to that, and so it's a good way to you know, find more people that way. If you follow their accounts, if you're lucky, they will follow you back. And that's great because they are going to, you know, be aware of your work and know when you regularly post things. And hopefully they'll keep you in mind if, in the, you know, the back of their mind, if a project that you're fit for shows up. If they don't follow you back, that's okay because I mostly follow art directors because they regularly post um, call to arts and jobs. So that's basically a post saying that they have a project that they're looking for an artist for and to just reply with your portfolio link. I did a book last year called I Am Perfectly Designed, a written by Karamo Brown, one of the guys from Queer Eye. I think it's over there actually. Um, and I actually got that gig because of Twitter. Basically, um, the art director posted on Twitter saying that she was looking for an artist for a picture book. Uh, she was looking for an artist who could illustrate greenery and had good character design skills and, you know, to comment with your portfolio below. And I replied to the tweet along with a, bu a bunch of other artists and I was luckily chosen in the end, which is really cool. I do need to stress that any interactions that you have on social media should always be professional. Here are a bunch of notes. Don't contact anyone via DM um, unless they say it's okay. Uh, you know, don't be sliding into those DMs and don't send friend requests onto Facebook. Facebook is definitely more of a personal account rather than something more business oriented like Twitter. Um, or if they have like a personal Instagram account, don't be following that either. Don't stalk them obviously don't tag them in your posts it's kind of annoying don't contact them on their personal email addresses or personal phone numbers or corner them in a non-professional setting uh just don't be creepy don't expect attention or followbacks they don't owe you anything you can comment on posts but don't be too overbearing and don't be too casual it's kind of a tricky subject, but I know that social media makes you kind of forget what the social boundaries are because everyone is talking into the void and having public conversations. And you don't want to join in sometimes, um, even if you don't really know the person. But just like, just treat people how you would in real life, respect boundaries, respect them as a person, and just be nice. Anyway, with all these submissions and emails you're sending out, hopefully you're going to get a few responses. When you're first starting out, this is unfortunately going to be the bulk of your time. Um, researching, sitting down and sending out emails every week for like a good few hours. If you find that you aren't really getting a lot of positive responses, then it might be a sign that you do need to rework your portfolio. And that's not a bad thing. You can just um, spend some time to create new artwork, hone up your art skills, uh, come back with a brand new portfolio and try again. If you have gotten some positive responses back, congrats, hopefully you've gotten a gig now. About the spreadsheet that I mentioned in part one, you know, where you keep an updated list of all the clients that you've worked with and you want to work with. Whenever I do end up working with an art director, you know, I'll note their information down and I know that I can always contact all these people later in the future if I need more work. Some people like to send out newsletters two to four times a year, you know, sending out a mass newsletter talking about uh, stuff that they worked on recently, any updates to their portfolio, um, any new achievements and whatnot, and just mentioning that they're looking for work. Uh, some people like to send out emails. I'm one of them. I find that it's a little bit more personal and I'll basically let a specific art director know that, hey, we worked on this project before. It was really nice working with you. I'm currently available for work and I'd love to be considered for any possible work you might have in mind for me. If you are going to be sending out emails like this and newsletters, you want to make sure that the person still works at that company. It's very common for people to, you know, get promotions and move on to other positions and change companies. So you can easily just um, 
Google, you know, are they still working at the company? Have they moved on? If you're working in publishing, there's this website called Publishers Weekly. It's um, a huge resource, I guess. Um, they'll do weekly updates on who's gotten book deals, what new releases are coming out. Uh, but one of the main things that they have is the Publishers Weekly Job Moves. Uh, they regularly post updates of job changes and promotions, so you can also find out where people are now. And you'll also have a list of art directors as well, if you are still on that stage. If the art director you've worked with has moved on, you can try to see if they if you might be able to find work at their new place of hire. Or you can find out who replaced them in like the previous company and then let them know that, hey, you worked with so-and-so previously. Can I work with you? Anyway, I hope this two-part video has been helpful. Um, I hope there have been some good tips and tricks for you guys. The only thing that I didn't get to was sending postcards to art directors. Um, this is because I have not sent out postcards before, <laughs> um, but I know that it is a very big part of a lot of illustrators' promotional stuff. So I'm gonna leave that topic for a future video while I do a little bit of research. If you like this video, please do all the YouTuber stuff. Please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or ideas for new videos, please let me know. Uh, thank you guys so much for the, po for the positive response on part one of this video. I really enjoyed doing this. I'm really glad I was able to help some of you guys out. And I hope to keep this a regular thing because I'm in quarantine and I don't know what else to do with my time right now. I know that my audio video is not great right now. I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm still trying to figure out the software and I am just recording with my iPhone right now because I'm not really ready to drop a bunch of money on equipment. But if you do have recommendations for improving the videos, please let me know. So you guys can follow me on my Instagram and Twitter. I'm at boxbill underscore art. You can find me on my website, anushasaya.com. Um, anyway, thanks for watching guys and have a great day. Bye.